Today's podcast is brought to you by Casper.com. Receive $50 towards any mattress purchase at www.caspertrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B. Until I met my new best friend, all of my boys say I'm tripping. When they call, I'm not answering. They always get my voicemail. Alex, are we rolling? We are rolling. Welcome to another episode of Sorry I've Been So Busy. This is a podcast where we talk to very busy people about what they're busy with. Sometimes we talk to people who are lying, pretending to be busy, about how they get out of doing things. And just doing a bunch of horse shit. That's Andrew Goldstein. <laughs> at Ange Gold on Twitter, A-N-G-E-G-O-L-D. A little slow there, but that's okay. Right. I'm Matt Goldich, at Matt Goldich, M-A-T-T-G-O-L-D-I-C-H. We're here at Showbriz Studios in the East Village. With Alex, our producer. Alex, are we rolling? By the way, uh, the team I'm playing in my fantasy football playoffs in our league uh, yeah. is called Alex. Are we rolling? Uh, uh, an homage to you. Yes. I'm going to get shirts made. I think. Oh, good. I think we really like should. It. We should Great. get Alex. Are we rolling? T-shirts. Um, and uh, merch. Uh, we got to yeah. get merch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you guys start out with the two things people hate listening to the most. <laughs> yeah. Fantasy football and inside podcast <laughs> and merch and, and merch, merch. And we, we nailed them all the yeah. three the heavy the, sure. the, the yeah. trifecta no. the goal here is to alienate combo. alienate as many people as <laughs> possible we do yeah 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 we want to get the, the who's your running back the, yeah right the <laughs> listeners What's Alan Kamara got a yeah. concussion I'm sick about it we, we don't want any fake listeners Any we want the people we who, don't want bots who, who are listening to really really want it um, so uh, check out all the other podcasts on the Showbriz Network go to the showbrizstudios.com, the YouTube page. Wait, quick time out. You'll enjoy that uh, our whole po- our whole fantasy league that we've been in for like 15 years. Yeah. All guys we went to camp with. Oh, great. Yeah. All Jew camp. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Love it. Continue what do you that. think of that? Calling it Jew camp. What do you think of that? I'm good. You're good. Well, because in, in normal... What about non-Jews it's a little saying in, to you, oh, you went to... you could, I can always tell when someone says it in a derogatory way versus... Yeah, you went they, to Jew camp. Yeah, you went to Jew camp. And I'm like, oh, I don't like that. Like, like, like it has like a 1939 no, it, connotation. Yeah, yeah just like, like a, this idea like that a, like they... You can tell that they think of it as something that they shouldn't do. matter in your life that is so small. But it like you, they know it matters to you, so they're kind of like yeah. digging at you by it, calling it Jew camp It's one of those things way. where it's okay if we refer to it as Jew camp but yeah. then if somebody says oh you went to jew camp then you're like all right you're well, did making you guys, a judgment yeah did you guys do like religious services yes, we that's did. why See, i didn't go to jew camp yeah. i went to a camp that happened to have 99 percent jew that's what right so I, that's the difference that's, that's a very big difference kinds. i would describe it as jew camp even to people who went to a camp like yours yeah like, we went to like hardcore Real, yeah, yeah. yeah so you guys were doing like services and shit. Sure. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I don't know see, why. this is this is the differentiation. We went so to the kind fun. of we went to the There's kind of camps that, Jewish um, camps that yeah. if you had really thought about it, you would have said, "Let's all go to a different camp I, next summer." Honestly, co-ed. Dude, Yes. Yeah, for yeah, years yeah, yeah. I used to de- when I used to describe our camp experience to Gentiles and people that didn't know. I'd say, "Well, it's a lot of dobbing and uh, hand jobs in the woods." <laughs> that, is, that, was, that makes sense. That was basically so, a camp. yeah, fifty fifty. That's how you did. Yeah. By the way, that's our guest. That's we have introduced. Him. We'll <laughs> introduce him in just a minute. I want to quickly give a shout out to our busybody of the week. I hope you uh, he enjoyed the uh, Mike. Those Weber are our episode. fans. Yeah, our fans. Um, the busybodies. He, he commented on the uh, uh, naming your fans. Another podcast thing. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> this is the uh, the Weber episode. A guy named Maxwell Sutt on Twitter asked if we talked about the Sixers and on the we Weber did. episode. We talked a little. We tried to keep it to a minimum yeah. because the we first, were, if, if you go the, back to our, our first, first Weber episode, guest in the first one, we talked, we talked about, a lot about the Sixers, Sixers and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. This time, we talked a lot about the movie, the disaster artist that yes. he co-wrote. So, but um, I did make a very good Michael Franco joke. Yes. Which is a Phillies record. So I, 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 I hope Maxwell enjoyed the episode. Well, shout out to Maxwell busy, Smart. Busy body of the week. Uh, and uh, Andrew, what have you been busy with? Uh, here's the thing. So, um, uh, you know, it's been a while since you and I were on the dating scene. It's been so long. It's mm. very long. Yeah. But uh, my sister-in-law is out there in the streets. And uh, I was having dinner with her and my wife uh, recently. And she told me a very funny story that I wanted to uh, share. But, you know, remember when we were da- when you would date and, uh, you know, the first date, you're just agreeable. Sure. You'll agree with anything just to make it go well. So, A, it's not awkward. And B, maybe you'll get laid. Yeah. Right? You'll agree with anything. So Unless you're nagging. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. So uh, 
keep that in mind. So I'll tell you the story. So uh, we're at dinner and we're talking about dating. And I was like, aren't you on that? You're on that uh, exclusive uh, VIP dating app that you need like invitation only. It's called Raya. Sure. Right. Heard, right? And, that's the famous one. Yeah, that's the famous yeah, one. Yeah, so yeah. she's on it. You either have to be hot or famous. Yeah. Or both. Or both. Or neither if you get like a hookup. But yeah. I was suggested for it by a very – like a person who's actually famous and I got waitlisted. Really? Like I wasn't waitlisted. Even, yeah, you can get waitlisted for it. So I, I love the like fraternity off. terms. Yeah. Alex. I mean, the, Alex. Are you on it? Waitlist, he said. I got waitlisted. You uh, did. Right? I got financial exactly. aid. Yeah. Who, who is your reference? Susie Essman? Who, who referenced you, Alex? <laughs> oh, my God. Charles Grodin. Yeah. I had, I had the like. Uh, Can you tell us who the famous person? was? It was Gad El Malay. He was oh, like, oh, yeah. yeah, he was like, dude, I got you. Like, there's no way you won't get on. And then I was and like, you dude, you fucking Wait, pull okay. through it. So you'll enjoy this story, yeah. which is I, I saved it uh, particularly for you. So we're talking about Raya, and she's like, uh, let me go in. I haven't been in it in a while, but let me go in and try to find you a celebrity. Because she's like, if you swipe long enough, you'll this see. Is, like, This is a classic. This is yeah. a classic annoying relationship person <laughs> thing to do. Take your dating app yeah. and swipe it. Well, for like married it's people, one big, it's fun. Yeah, one big game for you <laughs> to play with people's lives. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've matched with girls, and then I matched with this one girl once, and then I was like, she went to like the same college as me, and I was like, oh, this could be something, and she was cute. Uh, and then my friend, I texted my friend, who was a mutual friend of ours, I was like, hey, what do you know about this chick? And he was like, and he went and did some digging, and he wrote me back, he's like, Listen, um, her friend was swiping her account, and that's the only reason you guys uh, matched. Uh, there we go. And then I'm sitting there in fucking Loserville. That's like, uh, that's like, oh, okay. See? That's why she's not getting back to you. And it's like, I, I wrote like one, ma- like, hey, what's up? You know, how do you know so and so? And then uh, he gets has to come back to me to be like, yeah, you were just a pawn in this big game. There is a flip side to that, which sure. is maybe that would op- open her up to something that she wouldn't necessarily normally that's, go for it, herself. But like it, it, that's a man way to think, <laughs> right? That's a man. That's a, that's a our moms told us we look handsome no, in a suit no, 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 no. way to think. Because no, it's like I know the psychology of this is that guys think um, if a girl swipes right and doesn't get a match, she's like he said no already. When guys swipe right and don't get a match, they think uh, she hasn't seen me yet. Right. You know? No, because right. no, I, I, I will say one time my wife was swiping for uh, a guy mm. and was swiping on yes on the type of women that he wouldn't necessarily go for. Sure. And was and uh I you know, hopefully maybe starting some conversation. I it could go either way. I, I yeah. think it can go either way for a guy. You're probably we'll fuck right. anybody. You're probably right. Uh yeah, we'll yeah, fuck yeah. first and then meet you after. Yes. Uh, oh, <laughs> nice to meet you. I just yeah. came, well, you know. Yeah. And then uh but I Let me get I, you a towel. Yeah, for yeah. a woman she's like like and cuz we're f- swiping with our penis. Like like that's yes. like in our head. So yeah, a guys swiping being like, "Will she fuck right away? Will she fuck right away? Will she fuck?" Your wife is looking at it being like, "Oh, this is a sensible." Yeah, yeah. They have a lot <laughs> yeah. in common. Yeah. There yeah. You go. Okay, wait, let me just get okay, so sure. so uh she's like, "Let me go in and and see if I can find a famous person like John Mayer." Whatever. So she's swiping, swiping. <laughs> That's the He's go-to. Yes, That's the go-to. Like, everybody on Raya talks about, yeah. yeah. So she's swiping, and, she, and as she's doing it, she's like, "Oh wait, I have a message." So she looks at, the, she reads the message. She's like, "Oh, yeah, I'm like Jack I'm, Johnson." She's like, "Oh, I might, <laughs> I, I could go. I like might go out with this guy." And uh, I was like, "Oh, what's his name? What does he do?" And she says his name, and she's like, "Oh, he works for the 9/11 Museum." And for literally, that's a level of fame that gets you on the app. I, now I'm disappointed. For the next half hour, I'm just like thinking about being on that, being on that date, being like, "So what do you do? I uh, I work for the 9/11 Museum. <gasps> I love 9/11. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that's yeah, my yeah. favorite disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you gotta either. So we were doing it for like 9/11. 20 minutes, and then the postscript to the whole story is weeks later. Like, so she went out with him and didn't work out. And she, I, I go, "What happened with the 9/11 guy?" She's like, "Oh, we went out. Whatever. No, no big deal." No, no, no match. He I, actually and, curates the gift store. No, she goes. Yeah. <laughs> she goes. You'll never believe what his job used to be. I, I go. What? She goes. He worked for the Holocaust Museum. I believe it. This guy has like a thing. He's got a lane. That, he has a, know, and he's yeah. working that lane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But can you be, imagine being on a first date with that guy and like J- uh, 9-11. I'm fast. I love 9-11. Tell me all about it. Yeah, I. It, you have to wonder whether he brings it up or not. I don't know. Right away. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, and he's uh, his he, his career aspirations are like the the, the World War Three museum that's coming soon. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I'm hoping know, to right? work. Yeah. I'm <laughs> hoping to work for the Trump. He's the one guy yeah. rooting for nuclear yeah, war. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ah, for job crisis his job. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've heard so much uh, from our guests. I'm just going to introduce him. It's uh, yes. very sorry for jumping. I, no, I love we a love good that. podcast. We so love I, that. I, uh, I like to. And jump you're in. the host of a very successful podcast called the J Train. You were very very funny on a show. Uh, I w- I made called Vidiots, and uh, you just did Comics Come Home, which I want to talk all about. Which is like a, yeah. a, that's a huge deal. Uh, comedian Jared Fried, thank you for having me. Thank Pleasure. you for coming on. Good to be here. You're like the preeminent dating comedian. I, I guess so. I'm doing a lot of dating. Well, I just give some perspective. I, it's amazing. I, I know nothing. You blog loud for Betches. Opinion. I taught. Yeah, we started a new podcast actually with Betches called the uh, the You Up Podcast, which is just you strictly dating. Um, have you gone on Chelsea White's ghosting pot? It's all no, about ghosting. No, I haven't. I feel like, um, have you ghosted? Do you ghost? I've ghosted. I just, I, I've never felt good about ghosting. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, wait, so. Before y- it was called ghosting, I used to just call it the fade out. I yeah, just, classic yeah. Fade, out. fade out. That's what I used to call it. Too. What, uh, I mean, if you get into a relationship, I mean, does all of your stuff based on, like, uh, stuff that's happening to you currently? Like, what happened? Well, you- a lot of it, like, with the J Train podcast, it was just sending anything advice. Yeah. Any advice you want, send it and we'll give advice. It's just, yeah. uh, I know nothing, but. You're I'll like Dr. It. Drew. Yeah. Uh, but then the you up is strictly dating, but all of it is like, um, I think people write in and it's a lot of women that have started listening because I remind them of someone that they've dated or have, will have a perspective of someone, like their brother or You're their the cousin. Gautier song. Yeah. What's Somebody that? Somebody that I used, used to, to know. know. Exactly. So like I, and I think it's about, it's, if I got in a relationship, I would still be like, the problem I've had in relationships while doing this is that, like, I answer, like, yeah, here's what I've done. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, like, yeah. when someone's like, yeah, he ghosted, why is he ghosting after this, this, and that happened? I go, well, I've done that, and here's why I was kind of douchey in that situation, and yeah. why, uh, you know, the you know, and you try and be as vulnerable as possible, yeah. and stuff like that. Why- so, girls, you're, like, on a third fourth date with might go back and listen to the podcast and hear all of your sort of skeletons. Yeah, they, 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 there's enough to listen for like a year at yeah. this point. But uh, yeah, there's a lot out there. I'm amazed that any real celebrities would still go on Raya, the celebrity date, or any of these celebrity dating apps because it just seems like People, if people are out there talking about it, it's already not for celebrities, right? I, I, it seems. Well, yeah, but also, but on the flip side, I feel like you're a celebrity. It's really hard to meet a, somebody that's not like on your movie set or in your video. getting outside of the getting, bubble. Yeah, yeah. But I then guess it's so. still people that are ad- adjacently famous. It's I, people that want to date celebrities, which is creepy, right? Yeah, I, I think it's. Uh, from the male perspective, like if you're a successful like person on that app, the celebrity one, you, and then they just let women on, they they just it's like a nightclub, right? Like, like if you're a hot All woman, women, yeah, then it's very exclusive. <laughs> yeah, it's exclusive for, right. for men, and then for women, it's like, oh, you, she has a th- you know two thousand Instagram followers. For what reason? No one knows. If you got on it, if you but, got on it, what would be like your uh, hope? Not hope, but like what would be your optimum match on there celebrity wise like obviously you can't Ooh. go like oh I, if Rihanna was that's not gonna no, happen no I think but you, like realistically you're swiping and you saw some you'd be like oh my MB Alec <laughs> yeah that's the, that's always the goal I start at my MB Alec yeah. and work my way down I don't know I think I'm moving away from apps I think I think I'm trying to zag everyone's zigging I, yeah. think, I, I think getting off Do the Do you know apps. about this new one that was on Shark Tank, The Hate? It, it matches you on things you hate? I've yeah. joked about that for a long time, and uh, I saw that people were sending it to me being like, oh, Well, the guy yeah. who started it said he was a comedian, and then, and yeah. then he was a comedy writer. He was yeah. a comedy Came writer, up with it as a sketch, but he, was, and then he, but he like, worked for like Morgan Stanley before yeah. that, yeah. so I don't know how funny it Yeah, is. I mean, it, he's got to be hilarious to them <laughs> be like, let's start this app up. Yeah, well, or he or he realized it was more lucrative than, yeah, but... No, I was I I was just going to say would you rather be the like the star on Tinder or would you rather be some no name on the celebrity app? You know what I mean? Like would you Yeah, you, you I, like, go to a small like, school would you rather or a big be comedying school? with John Mayer or would you rather be comedic, competing with like, you know, some like asshole uh, I hear you. I, I I don't know. I I the new one that I've been into like if you're looking like there's now there's like different apps to like like I'm looking more to be kept in line. 
Right. You know, like I, I think with the apps for men, it's very difficult for a lot of the things we talked about in the beginning where it's like you, we're just like all like at the buffet eating everything. We're obese yeah. people. So it's like it, it, these apps where you have endless swipes, you just – you're never not – looking for other places to get Chinese food. Sure. You know, like uh, you go to Chinese food somewhere in this city, you're always wondering, oh, maybe I should have gone to that other Chinese food place. Right. Like I'm looking for more. I think like, you know, Hinge is a good app. And I like that app because you get 10 likes a day. Like I like Bumble because you can only speak to the people that speak to you. Yeah. You know, all these things. The How about J-Swipe? J-Swipe. I did that way back. I, too Jewish. Right. It's like your camp. Like I wouldn't be able to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's for your parents. Yeah, I don't. No, but I wouldn't like. Uh, you know, I just I'm looking for apps that are like keeping me caged. Yeah. You know, or because like you know you don't want to be uh, the the thing is a lot of people you know you can get addicted to these the act of the game of it where yeah you, the re- same reason that you'd be like let me play with yours. Yeah. You know, it is fun. It is made into, like, the lottery. You know, like yeah. the, it's a slot machine. All this shit is. By the way, let me play with yours is why so many celebrities are getting yeah. blacklisted right now. <laughs> sure. The yeah, main yeah. Reason. That's why they're back on Ryan. Um, I, uh, bef- I joke with my wife all the time that, like, my biggest regret in life is that I missed the swiping era. I was just talking about this with two of my friends that came into town, and we are like, we are hanging. They're like, I we crushed just it missed. on J-Date. Just missed is what I crushed saying. it on J-Date yeah. for a good, like, four to... Four to five years, mm-hmm. maybe less, and then uh, now I'm hap- very happily in a relationship and married. I didn't even do any. Uh, yeah, the, you were pre. Web, you were I was pre. pre I mean, no, it was going on. J Day was around, but I never right. got on there because I never. Uh, but there, uh, when it, I, there was still a tiny bit of a stigma attached to yeah. it. At the time. Yeah, there was a stigma, and uh, when I was doing it, there weren't alter. There were the only alternatives were like Match, but like that old guy on the commercial was t- like mm-hmm. I wasn't like going to go on Match. So yeah. and J Date was like perfect for me. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz like that's like the road to like meeting somebody that maybe you'll marry. I've always just been curious of these things. Like I just like I like what people write. I like oh, I like I, was I like obsessed. watching yeah, looking at what people put up. Like I I I am absolutely my, interested. My favorite thing was in like 90% of uh Females, uh, I shouldn't say the word female, I guess, but uh, in uh, girls' profiles, they would write, um, I love to get dressed up and have a night on the town, but I'm just as comfortable staying at home in sweats with a, on the couch with a glass of wine. In, on the couch with a glass of wine, yeah, the classic Every, line. Yeah. I, some form of that sentiment, 90, 90% of profiles. I'm happy to go out, happy I love to, to get in. dressed out a night on the town with my girls. But I'm just as comfortable at home on the couch with a glass of wine. So she likes doing everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, uh, the other one was like, just looking for my perfect partner in crime. I saw one yesterday that was, uh, <laughs> uh, they asked their personality type and they wrote 100% ambervert. What does that mean? And I had to Google it and it's... Amber alert? People who have been mentioned on an amber it, alert. It's 100%, 100% lost child. No, she... Uh, <laughs> She's an 100% ambivert, and I had to look this up. And if you look it up, it is someone who is equally an introvert and an extrovert. Oh, my goodness. Or as they once called it, people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> by, I thought it was cool it, to use the big word. By definition, 100% <laughs> uh, not a A normal. A hun- no, they're, they're the hun- uh, word 100% and ambivert are, they don't go together. They're are, nothing. Yeah. You're nothing. Yeah, it, yeah. It, but it, this is, it, I mean, this is very generational to strive to be interesting. Yeah. We, you know, like, we oh, just, I'm an ambivert. It's like, oh, what? That's, yeah. I think an ambivert has both sexual organs. I, I mean, that would at least I would be yeah, like, OK, a, this is yeah. something new. There you we go. were just and talking Amber with Bird one of not a thing. my wife's friends Amber about Bird. like um, like rules for like pictures. I always thought it was weird when it would be the group shot because mm. you were always like, which one is she? Got to figure it out. And like the girl that puts up the photo with a guy. That always turned me off. The guy, yeah, because it was. Then they'd be like, "That's my brother." Like, yeah. what are you supposed to think? Yeah, you know, like well, I, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. That person better have passed away. That's my. <laughs> I, I didn't. Um, <laughs> that I better didn't, been the picture on yeah. the tree that they crashed into. Yeah. I didn't pursue. <laughs> I didn't pursue Jamie for a long time uh, because her Facebook profile pic was with a guy. And it turns out it's like her GBF, her like her gay best friend. Yeah, and I didn't know that. I I had no way of knowing that. I just thought it was a well, very handsome yeah, guy. And I was like, well, wow, she's on the that's beach. How she's trying. She's to on the s- beach with a really handsome 
That was her way of, of scaring off, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Lester but that's like, a, you. that's like a rule of thumb. Don't do that. Well, don't do. I don't know. I I it just worked. It, it, I mean, the. What are your picks? Do you do like you holding a cute dog? No, no dog. I I do alone shots. Yeah. Uh, shirtless. Tons of shirtless <laughs> pictures. Uh, well, you, me and Mykonos, me you, and Tulum, yeah. you, I, yeah. me and so every in hot spot on stage. You, on st- no, no on stage. No on I, stage picks. No on stage. But I do alone shots. I'm one and I'm peeing in the woods in one. That's good. Which is it, it has I'm, to have, I'm, in a, I'm in a tux in the woods. It has to yeah. have some personality. Yeah, I'm, uh, and then there's one I'm holding a second place sign. Because right. I came in second place in something, and they were like, I would Do you want to take you? a picture of this? I don't know. I, I, I think it's what I think uh, with those pictures, like, we know the ones that are crazy. And if you don't know those ones, yeah. like, you're a crazy person. Yeah. For you, the listeners of Sorry I've Been So Busy, Casper is offering $50 towards any mattress purchase at Casper.com. This is something we talk about all the time on the podcast. Everybody's so busy, they don't get enough sleep, their sleep is interrupted, they got their phone by the bed. Uh, they're checking it in the middle of the night. Uh, we're not going to change any of these things, so why not get a better sleep on a better mattress uh, from Casper.com? To receive $50 towards any mattress purchase, go to caspertrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B. Again, that's caspertrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B for $50 towards any mattress purchase. Being a picture is oh, very uh, I love big. when someone uh, proceeds a Transition. With well, you'll see with, why. With owning well, how right. good yeah. their transition oh, is. Another podcast. Classic uh, pa- podcast. Classic podcast uh, banter. Save it no, for the podcast. This is a compliment. A- <laughs> uh, you b- Very big thing, I think, for your career. You got your picture up at the cellar, which is that's yeah. a big deal, man. Congrats. Uh, very excited. Awesome. Thanks, man. It, awesome. It's one of those things that, like, uh, I was very excited for it to happen, but it's also, like, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people on that wall, so that, like, I don't see a lot. So you get nervous yeah. about that. So like, it's nice. I'm very happy. It's it was important personally. Yeah. Um, but is there like a process to it? They take your picture. Or you just give them your. No, I was just one day. Uh, they were like, "Hey, that's let's a, get it up." There. I mean, that's kind like, of the cool. when you walk in the cellar you're, as a as a fledgling comedian, you're like, "Well, one day." Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I, I'm very excited about. That's really it. cool. It's, uh, it's very cool. I, and you know, I love that place. So like, yeah. in, when did you get passed? About. Two years ago, almost two years ago. Because now you're there uh, frequently. You're doing as you, much as I can. I well, mean, they got I, so I would, many rooms there too. Which now is they great. got three, yeah. which is like awesome. Yeah. Um, and I host a lot, so, you know, there, which is fun too, because you're around like such great yeah. comics. It's just cool to be around it, you yeah. know. Like, and yeah. uh, did you start here? I started in New York. Okay, I started in New York, but I'm from Boston, ah. so I was I was here after college, just. I was selling life insurance and annuities, and uh, this kind of just came up. So, standard. Yeah, I thought standard you were from thing. Florida because on video, it's, you talked about being from Florida. I did. Maybe, but did I you thought spend he did time com- in Florida. But I thought, I've been in Florida. I, I thought he know. did comics come home. That's Boston, right? Yeah, yeah. comics come home. Wait, Boston. okay. So I want to talk about comics come home. Yeah. Um, obviously, I want to hear from you, but I have a whole uh, a bit of a story. Go. I DM'd you a little bit. I uh, said that I have a very special place in my heart for Dennis Leary because my first joke ever on TV came out of Dennis Leary's mouth. That's awesome. Um, it, it was a Comedy Central roast of Dennis Leary, and I was a writer's assistant, and I got a joke in his rebuttal, mm-hmm. and that joke ended up uh, in the blurb on page six. So it was like a big deal for awesome. me, for me, and and I've always wanted to like work with him or run into him and be able to sort of like say thank you and tell him. So when I saw you did comics come home, that I, I got it. Um, initially excited, and then I remembered as I started thinking about the the roast, I remembered that coming at like um, very similar to the lineup for your comics come home. A lot of like, lack of a better term, old timers like mm-hmm. the like the legends, you know. Uh, on the roast, it was like Patrice and Colin and all those guys, and then the the, the young upstart comedian on the roast. That like at that point people really didn't know too much about, and he crushed it. Like leaving there, I was like, you know, who crushed it was that new guy, yeah. Dane Cook. Oh, really? And he yeah, was like yeah. the new guy that they were giving a shot to. And so when I saw the day the um, the lineup for for your comics come home, it just it reminded me of that Dennis Leary roast where I was like, they gave Dennis back even like. 15 years ago gave a shot to like a young Dane Cook. Dude, it's crazy. So, that, like, so how'd the whole thing happen? It's just, um, I gotta, I mean, it's crazy that that, this event's been going on like 23 years and it's like 23 years where like Cam Neely 
who played for the Bruins mm-hmm. was just a fan of comedy, and he was he even said he was like I just went to the you know I had when I was looking to go out I'd go to the comedy clubs. Him and Dennis Leary become friends. He wants to start a you know he starts this foundation the Cam Neely Foundation to help uh, cancer families and all this stuff, and they just start a show. And then 23 years later, like, they started, you know, they go from one venue to the next to the next, and now they're at the Garden. Yeah. And it's now this, like, thing that people plan their whole, and, you know, 16,000 people. And, and do they only have comics that are from Boston? or they So have- they do a mix. So it's like, the, so the whole idea is, like, that it's, like, so special that you get these huge names combined with people from the area. So, yeah. like, the lineup for that I was on was uh, Justin, Justin McKinney. I hope I'm getting his name. Yeah. He's he's super funny. Yeah. New Hampshire guy and like used to be here and then moved back to New Hampshire. And he like was on it, then I went and then um after me Lil Rel. Yeah. Yeah. From Get Out, like you're like yeah. you know, he's huge in his own right. And then uh Mo Ammer, who's awesome. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know him. Sure, he, yeah. He's all he plays all over the world. Right. And then and then it's funny, like at the middle of the show, Leary and Leary hosts and Leary's fucking killing and playing music and he's like a the rock best. star yeah and and then he's like oh i didn't even realize we separated like young people old people and then he's like and then he brings up jeff ross uh lenny clark, lenny clark right yeah, who's like the boston you know the legend guy. and then bob kelly bobby kelly who murdered yeah. and then fallon goes up. yeah and fallon's done it before like they've and fallon's going up and doing music and yeah. like doing stand-up and it's great and it's just cool because like everyone there, it's one of those like rare uh, shows where everyone's just like so happy to be yeah. a part of the people who work on it, all the production, yeah, all that comedy it. hatred goes away, and you're just like it's yeah, it's, it's just like it's that like, self loathing is all everyone at the door. everyone's on each other's side, and yeah. like the, even the production people they've all worked on it forever, right. and then you you know it's just so many people like I've never seen. That I'm guessing this around. has to be the most people you've yeah. ever performed comedy for. What was the previous record? I'm trying to think. Like, Not what? even close. Like, yeah. Like. Maybe a thousand people. Like opening for somebody in a theater. Yeah, I opened for Artie Lang once in Long yeah. Island, and that was like not even like the. It, I, I've been telling people, I'm like, yeah, it's 12 minutes that I did eight minutes of material for. Yeah. Because you're just like, you tell a joke and it would go out. Right. It was kind of like a. A joke goes out to sea, and then the wave brings it back in. How did you crazy. decide on your material? Of, you just know. anything that was like quick and would kill. Like right. I, like I didn't really like. I, I just and my parents were there. Like my family was oh, there. I'm sure, so like, that's the one you invite them to. Yeah, that's not the right. One yeah. show. That's the one. Uh, but they were all like, I think my for uh, you know, like for like you go on stage like you do this every night like whatever like I, I it was just a bigger crowd. Like I wasn't nervous. I was more excited. Um, but for my parents, they were like. My dad was like shitting his pants. Yeah. And well, you know, I've always said b- performing stand up, like, you know, like the times that I've done like TV or like mm. a big crowd, and people say, like, were you nervous? And it's like, no, like, I get nervous in front of like six people in a bar because that's when you're not going to get any laughs. Yeah. I was like, this is easy. This like, is they've easy. set this up where like you <laughs> yeah. can't, like, you can't really fa- I mean, I guess you could, like, you're I'm not gonna, gonna bomb. Even you're not you gonna bomb. With a Worst case scenario, scenario. there's sixteen thousand people there. You get a thousand people laughing. You I know mean, what I mean? Like totally. that's still a good. That's still way. It still more, feels good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can yeah. be. Yeah. You can dilute your. You what dilute you yourself. wear? Yeah, yeah. I just a shirt and jeans, and then like I. But I. You know what's funny? Shows like this, you realize how like how weird it is to do stuff like this. Like people don't know. Yeah. Like what they don't know, they just don't know. And it's like I had one guy. <laughs> It was my parents' friend. Um, I posted the conversation because just because I thought it was so funny. Where he's like, he had been coming after me to do this. Like he he's been like pitch. He'd been like messaging me on Twitter. He's like very like tech savvy for whatever reason. But he'll message me being like, I got these jokes for you. You uh, got to hear these jokes. Yeah. You got to hear these jokes. And I'd be like, and I would fuck with them because I'd be like, okay, next time I see you, got to get that <laughs> joke. And one and I went home and this is way before the show. And I go. And I, he, like, I thought he was just joking. Like, I thought he knew that I was fucking with him. Like, oh, let me get my notebook out. And then he pulled me aside and, like, actually told me these jokes. And they took, like, we were together, like, talking for, like, a half hour. Like, and I was like, I can't believe. Were they, like, street jokes or were they, like. They were, like. Stories? A a combination of street joke with story. Like, he had put a street joke into a story of his. 
They were really bad. And I and listen. Talk about the blow off. We'll get to it, but yeah. that's the oh my God. So, that you blow off. So he comes well this so he's telling me this so and in my mind I'm like, I can't believe he doesn't realize that I don't give a fuck about everything he's saying. Like, cause like right. I would think in any job like if I went up to him about his job and was like, Oh, let me tell you like and he was like, Oh right, you're gonna tell me how to do my job. Yeah. I would be like, Oh, I can see the but this is how much no. people, no one knows. Everyone thinks what, what we're doing he's is He's probably is easy the funny and, guy in the office. It's, I don't know what he, what he is. is. I, I don't even know, but it, I think it's more like confidence. Because yeah. I don't have that type of confidence. If someone looked at me and was like, yeah, let me get my pen. Because what I do is I really do for him, I was like, let me get my pen and paper out. And, and no he was like, awareness, just no, like, he was like, yeah, take it out. Yeah, yeah. Take our, so he you tells me take notes. a half hour, and I and at the end I go, I, I I'm like looking at him at the end of this joke, like <laughs> eyes wide, like I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So then the show comes up, and I get a message from him over Facebook, being like, "Hey man, uh, good luck tonight." And I'm assuming he's coming because like, or not, like I don't care, like yeah. you know, like coming or not. But uh, like a lot of my parents or friends are coming, so I yeah. go, "Hey man, thanks so much." And then he wrote, "And if you want this joke." Oh I'm about God. to do a show for 16,000 people. <laughs> and he's like, you, and if you want this joke, uh, or if you, whatever, what, my, um, those oh. jokes I gave you, like, and I, and I wrote back. I like, have Ajita just hearing this story. Dude, I wrote back. I was like, I was like, oh yeah, I'm doing it. Oh, I have it on my phone. I want to like read it word yeah. for word because I'm Go for it. Well, yeah. It was so bizarre. You told him you were going to do the joke. That I was, was telling him I'm going to do the joke. Was he there? I I like so hold on, this is the best okay. part. This is right. actually this is the part I, I don't want to get right. Yeah, I yeah. don't. I want to get this, this right. This is because another um, podcast convention. Pulling out the cell phone. Pulling out the cell mind. phone. No. And this is very a podcast. Uh, I just. But while you do it, I just like the idea of like performing your set, and that guy's in the audience, and then seeing him afterwards, be like, "Yeah, you did pretty good. You should probably should have done my joke." Okay, well, this is it. so he writes. Good luck tonight, Jared. This is the night five o'clock. Yeah. Comics come home. Sixteen thousand people. Career. Biggest show of my career with, yo, know, Jimmy Fallon's. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Like, sure. Knock him dead. So I wrote, "Thank you" with an exclamation point. Like I, I am genuinely appreciative. Yeah, yeah. That's what you write. He's taking an interest in your career. Very, very happy, and and he's a friend of my parents, and I I do like him, but th this thing is like right. yeah. going on. I'm, and then he writes back, "I'm sure you have your routine, Pat, for uh, down Pat for tonight." But if you want another of my secret jokes, let me know now. <laughs> it's a doozy that I think will bring down the house. If not, I'll share with you at a later date. Now, I would think that he's fucking with me if I didn't have this prior yeah. thing of him like actually that's a funny telling email me the joke. If it's ironic, but if it's, it's not ironic, ironic, it's not it's ironic. Not ironic. It's yeah. So that's why I'm telling anyone who's listening, like this, we had this whole history <laughs> yeah. of him looking at me like ah. There's the joke. That's yeah. Like, if you're a comedian and you go to your synagogue, this is what happens. This to you. happens all. Oh, okay. So I wrote back. So now I'm going to fuck with them. So yeah. I wrote back. I'm doing the one you gave me. They're letting me do a half hour so I can do the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm joking with him. Like, yeah. that, uh, he's so excited now. He wrote, Really? Which one? The post office? <laughs> I don't remember. Any of ah! these jokes? The post office. The post office. Yeah. Such a hack premise already. Uh, uh huh. The sure. post office. Yeah, you know all those times yeah. we go to the post office. Yeah. And I wrote, "Yup." <laughs> and then he wrote back, "Is it a hit?" And then I wrote, "We will see tonight at the Boston Garden." <laughs> <laughs> what is the deal with stamps? And then he writes, "What was the other one I gave you?" We are two hours until yeah. the show. He's asking me <laughs> the pubic about hair. I wrote. I he can't. has a show at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. He wants to make sure he doesn't yeah, do anything. Yeah, right. yeah, he doesn't want to yeah. double up. Yeah. What was the other one I gave you? I wrote. I can't remember. I was laughing too hard from the first one. <laughs> now you're trolling the shit out. Now of me. he writes. Seriously, you're joking, right? You didn't really use it, did you? Oh, I remember. Dem dare cupcakes. Seriously, you're joking, right? You didn't really, uh, really use it, did you? The post office one. Oh, like now God. he's kind of freaking out. Yeah, like, now he's like, excited. I wrote. So I wrote back, uh, get ready. That's all I wrote. So then here's the, here's the most, here's the, the turn at yeah. the end of this conversation where, like, you know, this is what happens to comics all the time. Yeah. He writes, I won't be there. Your aunt was supposed to invite me to the box, but she never came through. And I can't sit below because I have a bad leg and back. Yeah. Total men's club. So hilarious. He's now I need him there. Yeah. 
<laughs> he's fishing for an invite, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, oh, you're legging back. Like, I, we went through all this. You, so you, you think I'm going to tell your joke. You're so excited, but, yo, know, I, I, I got this leg back, back yeah. thing. Sciatica. Can't make it. Yeah. Ugh. So ridiculous. That, that's wow. Amazing. So he didn't, so he didn't come. Didn't come. Yeah. Well, the probably whole, I for guess the best. It, I mean, you don't want to invite the guy. At a certain point, you would have had to give up the bit and say, like, no, I'm not really going to do your joke. Because no, you don't want to invite him there, make him think you're telling his joke. And that's, like, the worst. I would, I would, it'd be no, great. I would have let him fucking think it for the rest of his life. Ah, it'd, it'd I don't be, give a shit. I mean, it'd be terrible, but it'd be great if he was in the audience and you're, like, halfway through and he's like, do the post office! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dem Dare one, Cupcakes. Dem Dare Cupcakes. Wait, I mean, Dem Dare Cupcakes is like he's a blue-collar comedian. Yeah. I, I think that's kind of the punchline. I don't know. There it, is a. It's weird because there is a uh, a certain. You really have to ask if you're in like a different town, and you were, and someone was like, "Oh, I got these great jokes about like Boston." You should tell. You'd be like, "Okay, leave me alone." But like, there it, you have to ask because there is a situation where like before the show, you say to somebody like, "Hey, like, what's a road that everybody uh, hates driving on here?" So you know to like, but you know what I mean? Like, I, if someone it. if someone comes up to me and is like, hey, "I got this story. I don't know if you can use it," I'm willing to like give someone the, the, if you come in like hat in hand. Yeah. Like I listen, I don't know what your story may made me think about. Like I I if you think about it, yeah. that that whole bullshit thing with him got Could me to telling you this. Yeah, sure. Today. It's a good So yeah. like it's Temple. a fun thing to talk about. So yeah. I'm always open to like having yeah. whatever conversation, but like there I think we forget that people don't aren't around this every day. Yeah. Uh nobody thinks they're everyone th- nobody thinks they're not funny. Yeah. Everyone and there's a difference between having a good personality and being funny, yeah. and we know that. But it's also at the same point of like, you have to give people so much benefit of the doubt. Yeah, when, you're when the most they, famous person that guy's ever met. Maybe you're uh, number one on his Raya. <laughs> on his Raya. Yeah, so. <laughs> you're his, he swipes. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Uh, let's get into Jared's day. Yeah. Do you have a day from this week that was interesting? What's a typical or, day? Uh, like? a typical a day. Yeah. Um. I mean, I could take you through it. I like uh, going to these. Uh, so, like, I'll wake up and uh, I'm like an early for, you know, earlier riser. Early for a like, comedian. Yeah. No, you did say we start pretty early. This is pretty early. And this was to 11. Get. We 11. 10. Yeah, this is 9 30. Yeah. I'm like out okay. of bed. Yeah. Like, I'm good That's to pretty go. pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, I send, I mean, I don't know. This is very. Well, that's small what we want. No, let's stuff. get into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm a big Keurig guy. Sure. Love a Keurig. Yeah. Pop I threw mine out the window in protest of, of real, Hannity. Did you? Hannity. No. Oh, good for you. <laughs> no, I did not. Listen, we all oh, have our cross the bear. Yeah. So I'll do a Keurig. I'll do that. Um, I'll make a protein shake. I yeah. used to, I got on this whole omelet kick where I would tape myself making the omelets and I would do J Train Omelet Hour. Well, you do a lot of uh, shirtless Instagram, Instagram lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram. Uh, yeah, I don't do lies. I'll do posts, posts but, uh, I mean, yeah, well, updates and stuff. But like, yeah, I'll be doing that from my couch. Where like, I do. I've always considered this like a job. Yeah, so I do think like you wake up, get into your day. Like I have a list of things to do every day. So it's like whether you it's make the, it the night before, or you make it the morning. I make it uh, ongoing. Yeah. So it's in my calendar. I have every day is filled up with these like just prompts. Yeah. So like you know a lot of them are like emails. So yeah. it'll be like people to follow up with. So there's people that literally I've been following up with for like five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where I'm just like, hey, here's a new thing I've done. Here and maybe they work in production or they mm-hmm. work at, you know, an agency or they work at You're proactive you know, about your career. Proactive. Because no one's looking for me. So I just kinda like keep up with people and keep up with people and I always say to them, I'm like, listen, if I email you once, I'm gonna email you maybe a couple months down the line yeah. with videos and stuff, and I'll say, Tell me to stop. Yeah. Like, I'm cool with that, too. But if, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Like, literally, I just did a a pilot for Snapchat with a guy that I've been emailing for literally five years. There you go. And I didn't even know he worked on it. We walked I walked into the room in L.A. to go do it the next day. And I'm like, what are you doing here? He's like, I was, like, involved with this from get-go. And it's like, that's it. And that makes me feel good because it's not work that Your wasn't was fruitful it was fruitful and even without knowing and even without like the idea of like i'm 
I think you can email people without expecting anything in return. And I think a lot of people, when you're younger, doing anything, you're like, when are they going to get back my email? Yeah. And like, We talk about it all the yeah. time. They're yeah. Like, can you help me email? Yeah. And it's like, I don't send, can, yeah. Can you help me email? Suck. And I, listen, I worked in life insurance. I, I and this, what you do is hit people up. Yeah. So I learned a lot from that where it's like, just here for if and when. And I think that's like a much better way of going about well, that's people. That's what yeah. I was saying on the jo- on the Partridge podcast about like, hey man, just updated my resume, and no, at, you're not, j- and I'd like you to have it. It's absolutely, yeah, and it's, refre- it's actually refreshing. Boy, he to made people. it sound a lot better than you did. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's it's, why he. Yeah. I think it's refreshing to people. Like I think, especially with like comedy bookers, like with stand up, I, I always. I am thankful for getting on any stage. So, like the next day after I get on any stage, for the you know for certain places, I'll be like, "Hey, thanks so much. I had a great time." You're a good Jewish boy. Try my best. Yeah, <laughs> try so, my best. You um, sending these emails? So, Sorry, the more, go ahead. I was going to say, what are you putting these omelets? Oh, I will. I was doing it for a while because this like fitness guy, Sadiq Hedzavik, I signed up for him, and I was like, "Hey, man, I want to do this new eating thing." And he was like, "You know, he gave me this whole plan, and I tried it. It was just a lot of." The cooking and stuff, I kind of like yeah. felt. Yeah. It was just a lot, but I was going egg whites with like veggies, and it was just a lot of egg whites. Like these were big fucking omelets. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then I would do good flip, good week. So I'd do like a flip and tape it and put it on Instagram. People seem to like yeah, that. Yeah, that's stupid. Shit. Yeah. And your protein drink, what's in that? Uh, just a regular like we way we a we so protein. the morning when you're like <laughs> that was a Jewish grandmother way to say way <laughs> so way so morning you're like eat breakfast and then you're like on the couch sending emails sending or like, emails or writing stuff up or like uh, just getting prep stuff yeah like I feel like I, like if I was working in a kitchen I'd be putting yeah. all the stuff yeah away and then um, I go to uh, I I then I try to, I I I like to go to this thing called Barry's Boot Camp. And it's like a very expensive. I just worked above gym. one, really. Yeah. And so you've seen the the I know people what, that go all in day. There. I'm like, what do these people do during the day? All day. All and day. I love it. I'm probably gonna go from here. Um, I like that it's an hour in, and you're done. And yeah. they play the music. They do the thinking for you. There's never like a point where it's like, oh, I gotta do like three sets. So I try to go to that. Like one, on Tuesdays, I like to go because so butt. it's a set routine, and you just walk in and, and you join do it. it, and you do it. I go on the butt day. Because I don't like doing legs in the gym. Yeah. Because it's like, I just think that's the hardest thing to get over. And, and to boring. self-motivate for. Self-motivate. So yeah. I go into this and it's like, the, you're basically on the trip. And basically, this dude yells at you for an hour to just. Well, when you walked in, Matt whispered to me, he's like, did you see Jared? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, well, no wonder you also you're off the dating apps because if you're, you're going and interacting with people with great butts, why do you need Why them? would you need why them? Would you Have need you them? The that? women that go to these classes yeah. are unbelievable. Like right. it is a level, especially like a yeah. midday Tuesday class. Like that's yeah. not like a, a normal chick. No. <laughs> you know, like Have they, you tried uh Flirting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Have yeah, yeah. you gone out with any Barry's I, boot camp I, I have. Um, we. Yeah, I have. It's all phys- phys- uh Like. Um, it's interesting. I mean, one time I talked. Like, I, I, I like this strategy called the the side comment. Like, I, I given this out as advice. Oh, sure. Yeah. Where like yeah. you'll just say something off into the ether. And if a girl latches onto it, that means there's some sort of interest because like, she was looking for you to say So just in, in the room, in the uh, give us an example. So like if I was at a protein shake bar and I would look at the protein, I'd be like, I'd be like, oh my God, there's so many fucking choices. And then if a girl like, if she's like, she oh yeah, like, I know, oh, yeah, right? you should get this yes, one. Yes. There's an a level of interest. Yeah, like she's sure. willing to even speak to you. I had one day where I was like, I said something like that. And this girl looked at me and she goes, huh? <laughs> And I just go, I go, there's just so many protein shakes. She goes, are you from, like, Greece? This is what she said to me. And I go, oh, this girl wants to fuck me. So, (laughs) And then in my mind, and then she goes, I go, no, I'm I'm from uh, Boston. She goes, Oh, I thought you were someone else. And then just turn and walk away. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it was like, yeah. oh, no interest whatsoever. The, the problem is with the world and with men in general is that there are too many guys who would then continue to pursue that sure. woman. Yeah. And be like, won't... oh, I think she liked me because why would she say, you know. They don't know. Find yeah. her on Give Facebook. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, ask yeah. the guy I heard the her first what? name. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Or I snuck a peek at the computer, got her first name, went home to Facebook, I mean, found her, <laughs> saw, sent her a bunch of emails. We joke a little bit about it, but this is like so reality. Like, 
there are so many friends of mine that have guys message them over Facebook being like, I saw you on the dating app. Uh, um, just thought I'd say hello. And that's kind of back to what I was saying in the beginning where it's like a guy swipes right. She hasn't seen me yet. Yeah. Like, there's no thought of yeah. she's said no. Yeah. There's just no thought. Yeah. And I mean, that's like, you know, you're fucking. Yeah. Do you shower at Barry's brain? Camp? I do. Really? Shower there. Well, it's, is it a stall or is it a whole communal? No, it's a stall. But there's like it, it's great. I mean, they got a stall situation. I don't know what <laughs> what showers what you've been in. Are you going to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a, only the JCC. Oh my god, Upper West Side. Yeah, <laughs> the old shower, Jewish, old, old Jewish ball, Jewish shower. Come in. Yeah. That's no, real no, you're, not a gym yeah, you're not. I know what it is. Not you don't a, shower at the gym. I don't shower at the gym, yeah. so I don't know. Oh, I love showering at the gym. Because it's like, now you're done. The day yeah. is yours. Yeah. You can go from but then, there. But what do you put on? You put on this clothes. So like the clothes I'm wearing you now. bring I have, that. I have the gym clothes in my backpack. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you bring. So you put back on your Put back clothes. on. Got it. You have a problem with that. I can tell. Why? Because he's worn the clothes. And so in your mind, they're dirty. And no, so I'm not that guy ever. No. I, 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 I rewear the same shirt and jeans all weekend. Mm. That's my I'm move. Not that guy. So I, I go there, do the whole thing, shower, and then I can just sit. Yeah. And then I can like go from there to like other things. Right. I don't know. I, I like the thought of like the gym just being like this like pass through of your day. Sure. It's sure. a good way to approach it. Well, when I can't get to it, I I'm like uh, like if I don't get out of my own get out of my apartment, like it's just not gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, and eventually, I mean, you one way, but and then, but you go lunch or coffee shop or something. What do you do like the rest of the afternoon? So then I'll so go to like a coffee shop. Yeah, I'll go eat. I'll come back if I have to come back to my place. I'll come back. I don't um, take you as a writer at a coffee shop guy, though. No, I I do. I I'll sit down. I, I laptop. Mean, sometimes if I'm writing like like a blog for like a website like that that's asked me to do right. something, I'll sit with it. Yeah, at like a coffee shop, just because to get out of my apartment and stuff. And then at night, I go. You wrote the uh, one for Betches about the, and it was I loved it because it was a bit. I mean, it was a thing that my friends and I used to joke about when we were all dating was the whole like the jobs girls have. Oh yeah, the five girl, the five jobs all girls in, in New York have. They were they were basically like what does got basically the Betches articles have become what do guys think of this thing? Yeah. And then I'll just write it's like the PR, most honest. And PR teacher. is the busy. Well, that was the kind of the, the, this podcast. Like the PR person, no one is as busy as a girl who works in PR. I, you, I think you tweeted that and I showed it to my wife who works in PR and she thought it was hilarious. Yeah, that's, uh, that was my favorite one because that, those PR, the amount of busy that a PR person is, <laughs> yeah. is like, I've never heard, like, I, I just think like the, the, I, I like the idea of this podcast because I, I do think this is a, it's a female thing to talk about how busy you are because they compete with social – you know their social standing is much more competed upon than guys' social standing. Guys, I think we compete about different things that are very stupid. Fan, uh, like fantasy football. Fantasy Ooh. football. Well, we get it out of our system. Yeah. The female version is just <laughs> – not as right, like it's so just it much more be, understated. Yeah, so it's like you know uh, who who at the brunch is married, who at the brunch is single. Okay, sure. the married girls winning, the single girls losing. Um, who <laughs> yeah. who who were, who's the busiest and can never hang out? Well, she must be successful because she's always doing right. stuff. Um, I for guys, I think you know we just don't. I can look at someone and be like, you're not fucking busy. Yeah, shut the fuck up. That's why we basically started this podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like. Yeah, even you know we're busy, but half of my day is like taking a lap. Yeah, in the I mean, office. I mean, I'm I'm walking. You know, after that gym class, like I, I rush to get to that point so that the rest of the day is not a rush. Yeah, you know, like and then I spend the rest of the day kind of like fucking like, around clearing and clearing out my podcast queue counts in my head. It's like yeah. I did some shit. <laughs> did yeah. some shit. I did some shit. I mean, today. remember how? Remember back in the day? Or I don't know if people still do the G chat. Busy, not busy. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's like the the act of turning on the red dot means you're not busy. <laughs> yep. You be know, right, like just right back, doing that. Him. Yeah, you're not busy. No. Busy is not getting on in the first place. Yes, exactly. So, or being invisible forever. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to talk to people. I, I just, this whole idea that like, and also our lives, you know, I could understand it like 20 years ago. We have, everything has been built to make us have more time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like the, the texting. You yeah. could do every job from home. They you, just they just have these offices because it's a thing that yeah. you do. So we, we, d- d- the difference between now and 30 years ago as far as being busy, like look at all the shit. Just that gym class alone is built so I only have to be at the gym for literally 55 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm done. You don't have to buy Christmas presents anymore. Th- you don't have to buy groceries. Yeah, stores are going out of business because nobody shot. Nobody, yeah. it's every, everything's online. Your groceries oh, are delivered at old men it, within an hour of when you want them. What's the rest of your day like? So then I just hang out and then I do shows at night. Yeah. So like, uh, but like Mondays, like I'll go and tape podcasts because I do two a week, and then where do you do it at home? Stand up New York. Uh, the labs oh, upstairs. The labs Got upstairs. It. So I I do two podcasts a week. So I get them done on Monday. And then that night, I'll go out and do, like, Monday, the cellar, they have new joke night, so I I get to, I'll do that every, you know, as much as I can. And then, you know, shows after that, if i hosting at 1130, I'll be there from 1130 till 2 in the morning. How does uh, the stand-up schedule conflict with dating? Um, like, a will, lot. Will I, mean, you... I mean, blowing people off, I mean, we're going to get to that, right? Yeah. yeah. That's like, blowing, I'm very, I, I blow people off with dating more than anything. So, like, I have a show. I have a show. Sorry, I can't do it tonight. But how many nights a week do you are you typically doing shows? Pretty much every night. So, like, are you yeah. going? Do you ever go on a date the same night you have a show? Sometimes I'll go like before I have the show. Yeah. Um, I've been like kind of out on dating lately, though. Like, yeah. just because of that. Like, I, I'm kind of sick. I think there's a certain age, uh, like that you get. Like, you guys are married, and then my friends are like mostly married, and I think like part of the reason to get married is to not do all this shit anymore like like it's just yeah like, it, it it's is exhausting. a big it's a big weight off your shoulders you, you don't have to also i don't have to con- like you i'm constantly disappointing someone right so like i'm constantly right. turning someone down or turning down a date or turning and i'm not saying this to be like cocky like i just think like if you're in a position people want to go out they want to do first date second date third date couch yeah you know like they want the right. the schedule of dating and I kind of have bowed out of that. That would be I'm a like great kinda T-shirt sick. that I think you can make a lot of money on. <laughs> First date, second date, third you know date those, couch. You know those list shirts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I know exactly Magic what Magic bird. Yeah. That's great. Um, and But I mean, like, the other thing is, uh, uh, I guess you could go on a lunch date, but then it's like, who's available at Tuesday lunch? And if they are, do you really want to go out Lunch with them? dates are shit, because you know you're not getting back to their apartment in the daytime. Well, this is the other problem. Like, the co- I've done coffee dates, and those have been fun. But, like, then you're just like... Kind of, we just come buddies. Yeah. You know, like, there's no sexuality yeah. to it. Yeah. It's for job advice. There's yeah, no coffee date with a girl. Job advice. Gonna... And then I think I've told this to girls. Like, if a guy's doing a coffee date, that means he has someone else he's fucking that night. Like, it's just right. you know, he like, needs the energy. And yeah, he needs, <laughs> yeah, he needs, he needs to get the... that caffeine yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of talked about the bluff. I, there's two other things I really want to bring up. Sure. Jared, I know we're going long. Yeah. I, we, no, it's fine. Leave we're the okay. format a little bit. One of the big things, uh, you're a really fun follow on Twitter. Thank you. What's your, it's your at what? At Jared. J Train 56. At Jared, at J Train 56. And, um, I'm doing it right now. But you're not just like, um, a joke guy about the news. You're a commentator on the people who joke and comment and the out, <laughs> be outraged about the news. And I'll read this tweet that I loved oh, so you. much. It crystallized it so much for me. And I want to talk to you about sure. this because not enough people have this perspective. Which he, So the tweet is, get some sleep tonight, people. We've got a big week of being outraged about subjects we've done very little research on. Yeah. Like to me, that is the core issue of what's happening in this world with social media is just all this outrage on t- like people are yeah. like yelling at other people about health care and they have no idea yeah. about any of the I, things they're talking about. It kind of depresses me like I because I, I know nothing like I'm not that I'm like yeah. an average guy like uh, the same reason that I give out dating advice is the same reason yeah. I don't talk about a lot of politics at right. all. Yeah, because I'm like, I, I don't. Someone could call me out that knows a lot more than me, and I don't want to be an idiot, and I would rather just listen. Um, but I I think um, I just don't believe – I don't buy that everyone's that much smarter than me. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, yeah. like where – you guys are from, from where? Philly. Yeah. Lower Moreland. Where? <laughs> where? I, I'm closer to Lower Moreland. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Abington. Where? I'm where? very close sure. to Abington. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So where Bucks you guys? County. Bucks County. So I know where you guys are from. You yeah. went to public school? Yes. Yes. So we all went to public school. We all went to summer camp. Like, 
we're, you know, we're all within 20% of each other. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, and I'm not saying that someone can't have, be an expert in certain yeah. things, but there's so many hours in the day, <laughs> you know, like, like, so like, I know what I know, which how is How could he vote yeah. no on chip? So, yeah, like... <laughs> You know, like net neutrality. I don't fucking know what chip yeah, is. That's oh a gosh. cop show. Net neutrality. I yeah. don't know anything about yeah. that. Yeah. I don't example. know anything about that. And the people who keep con- trying to convince me, it seems like they're going to make money off it in one way or the other. Yeah. Trump- I don't know. Whatever way they want it to go, it feels like they're bringing me in the, into an alley to be like, you got to do it this way. Trump's yeah. Jerusalem decision will totally destabilize the Middle East. I- <laughs> there is- and then I'm like... You're a comedian. I have no idea about that subject. Yeah. I have no you idea. You, I don't know. So I spend my day looking at people that I think had the sim- similar... And I'm not saying you you can know one thing, but I don't think you can know right, all yeah. of these things. So I'm a interested lot of my, where Matt falls on it. Well, I mean, the one thing you could say that you're an ex- you're sticking to what you are an expert on, which is human behavior, which is you've observed the, the things that you've observed in people, and that's what you're trying to be. You know, I, I I do think my whole thing is, you know, I try to mostly keep it to myself and also follow people to, who have some sort of comedic take on the news. And sure. even if you're angry about something or even if you're like feel strongly about something, you're at least trying to turn it into some sort of like clever or funny totally. thing as opposed to people who are just yelling at you, which I – you know, I, I would much rather read an article explaining something than having someone on social media. Totally agree about with something. it. If you're making yeah. it funny, that's yeah. like number one of anything. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And like a tweet like that where it's like where I'm saying like we've done a little research on is more about yeah. the people that are like just raging. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, I don't know how you yeah. figured it all out. Like, well, you, I don't know how that, you could be you so. You have the uh, bit, the joke in your act you did it for your CD about uh, the positive thing about all this Trump stuff is that it, t- it taught me who my senator is. Or, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I, I, well, I said I don't want to live in a world. I mean, I mean, uh, it's not normal to know who your congressperson yeah. is. Yeah. I do think people have Normalcy become more... is to not know yeah. who yeah. your congressman is. But people have researched more because of what's going on. They become yeah. more active, yeah. and, which is a, good for them. I, there's I, also a difference between being woke and being, like, informed. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I do, did. You guys see what happened with the ten, Tennessee coach? Like this, like this. Yeah, is really, right. That really bothered me. <laughs> like, you no, know, it did, and, yeah. Because that's like the everyone talks about. I hate slippery slope arguments. I hate that. Like, if this happens, this happens. This is the example of the falling down the slope. Yeah, like with Tennessee hired Greg Schiano. Yeah. He had this like rumor. There was a rumor that he was like mentioned in the Sandusky investigation. It wasn't. Enough yeah. to get like prosecuted, like it didn't get known. Yeah. No lawyer, lawyers Can, looked at it, yeah. and like, there's nothing here to press charges on. Yeah, and then he gets hired, and then Twitter Tennessee. Goes, well, Tennessee fans didn't like the hire first. Yeah, yeah. and they used this pedophile flag. Yeah. to get him out. Yeah, they were like, well, "There's only on one Twitter, which is becoming a thing now." Right, and obviously. it's like you know, it's like, and this is a story that no one even like looked into. No, but they you they were like, "Okay, pedophile is a strong enough word to get this guy out." Yeah, yeah, and that's what they did, and it's like that could happen in so many different things now, and it's yeah. like it's that's a scary part to me. And know. that's why Roy Moore should be able to be <laughs> in the Senate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. real quick, the other thing I wanted sure. to bring up, we're probably over time, but no, uh, uh, the ba- you're very into the Bachelor. Love you, the Bachelor. You live tweet that I know bachelor. about that I know. You're an there expert. You, yeah. you live tweet about the Bachelor, yeah. and I want to know. How into the community, the Bachelor uh, Nation, have you gotten because of your your lot your your sort of adjacent? I am very vibe. adjacent, but I'm more in than most than I was before. Have you been to like get-togethers? With no, cast? I haven't. I the one thing I did, I got hired to do like Bumble or like makeover. Like I, I interviewed a couple of former contestants, and that right. was fun. Um, I, if anything, I've been. I think I'm like one season away from really yeah. hitting my bachelor. He's stride. like the male. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jared, I got into it late. Jared's I got like in, the male Michelle Collins when yeah. the bachelor. I love was Michelle on. Collins. Yeah, she's the so, best former, so, you know, 
Good friend of ours. Do you know her? Yeah, Yeah. former guest of the pop. So I have a friend that's trying to get us together because I I want to like meet her. Oh, we could hook up. She's great. Yeah, for Um, sure. You know, uh, you've become like a fun companion piece to The Bachelor for me and my wife, where like Jensen Karp, who used to have The Bachelor podcast with his girlfriend, and they used to review it. Used to be they stopped doing the podcast, and you've kind of filled that void for us. So thank you for me and my wife. But uh, what uh, what. what do you, I mean, real quick on The Bachelor, what got you into... Here's what I like about The Bachelor. Yeah, yeah, right? I, and just like I said I, before, I'm religious. I'm very interested in this, like, about reading the, show, the, the No, but about dating. Yeah. Like, I just like, and I think The Bachelor, I'm like, if you look at it wide, it's a stupid show. Like, if you look at it from, like, way back, you're like, oh, guy marries one woman out it of makes 40. No sense. It makes no sense. But if you look at the small moments... Those are fun to make fun of and to talk about because it's like there'll be like a girl that will say something that every girl agrees with. And as a guy, I think it's fun as a guy to look at that and be like, oh, you couldn't be farther from the truth. This is I I see. We are totally falling in love. Yeah. And then you cut to the guy and he's like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You're cool. (laughs) And then it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then like, but then I see myself I always just put myself in the guy's shoes of course and I love doing that and I think that that's why it's been fun for like girls to like you know, and guys I think guys that watch their girlfriends are pumped about it because at least it, they're not alone in their house being an asshole yeah they have me as an asshole with them yeah, yeah. where it's like You're see we, I'm not stupid. Don't you yeah. think uh, the funny Jewish guy is like an archetype that they have not taken advantage of? Haven't up? done it. Um, I think it's because none of us are good looking body. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm sure I there's think. been one. I always, I mean, I never, I don't watch it anymore. It's been many, many years. But I always used to like, I've had obviously jobs where I had to watch it. And yeah. I always enjoyed The Bachelorette more. Yeah. Well, I it's always more natural. Liked, it is. <laughs> yes, I always The Bachelorette had more... Has more opportunity for it to work out. Yes. It's more believable that this woman yeah. could actually be. The Bachelor at this point, well, this this season Ari is going to be The Bachelor. Yeah. And I think the fact. I thought that was, oh, our first, and then because his name's Ari, I was like, oh, maybe he's Jewish. No. But it's like, it's, <laughs> it's spelled not. so yeah, ridiculously. Like but I remember there was one season of The Bachelorette where Bob Guinea was the funny guy. Yeah. Yep. And then, like, he I've gets known as, like, the funny guy. And then immediately he's like, I'm putting out an R&B album. And yeah. it's like, oh, no, the you're not problem. the funny guy. <laughs> I met Bob. We've done, like, yeah. the Today Show guys tell all together. Yeah. That is the nicest man I've ever met in my entire Like, you I'm get sure, it but right I think away. It went to the his problem head. with the cat. The thing is that with the funny guy is they overdo it. And w- when they bring a funny guy yeah. on, he's like gross. Like he's like he's the, the he's waboom the, guy. Yeah. yeah. He, like he, it's, it's he's out gimmick. of his mind. It's yeah. never just like maybe the bar- there's no subtlety. One like kind of like fun guy who became the bartender last season. He was a radio personality. Yes. Wells. But yeah. It's never just like a like a normal the one you hear about being funny they never put on camera I think Wells was funny right but he was just like they were like yeah you he, you could tell he was like friends with the producers like they made him the bartender on Bachelor in Paradise because they, they were like yeah we just like hanging out with this guy yeah. yeah you know you could always tell there's there's glue people in the house yeah and they don't make it on camera as much. And the you, jobs are funny. What about the like overt comedy from the producers? That that's kind of a. I love I like some, the, the cutaway shot to the the hermit crab. Yeah, I there's, there's there's fun stuff they do. I like I like commenting on the producers, like what they're doing, because yeah. you can always tell. You follow Elon Gale. I follow him. Yeah, he's, um, fun. he's a fun follow. I. I I just enjoy the whole world of it, and I like that it's like another way to like. Last question: If do you it. if you could take out all of the like your friends seeing it, your family seeing it in a vacuum, would you just love to be a contestant? So my Cause my whole thing was hometowns. I could never get. Pe- I like. I would never on TV take. My dad uh, has part. been pushing me for years. Really, to do it. my dad thinks that this like is, he's like he's like this will help you so much more than like because you can't understand shape. you're in why, shape not in, and this is not bachelor in shape those right. guys are True. like are like in crazy yeah. i would look obese <laughs> right on well, that you'd show. be the funny guy anyway so I, that's fine the funny guy yeah, yeah but you'd also the di- you, they would paint you as the dick because you're on i'd be painted the dick and then i like funny guy it would be i think it would be even harder to be funny because i'd be comedian jared Freed. yeah that's my yeah. job so now it's like you're judged under a certain like a way different scope yeah. than you, you know, that's what makes me the most nervous of like trying like because now it's gone through my head like i like of like yeah that would those people get 
those all the guys that go on, they're following. They go and if they have another thing that they do, they can be doing that thing. Like the one guy that was the back guy, the the guy who won Rachel's season. Yeah. He's a, a what's it called? Chiropractor. Chiropractor. He's now the most successful chiropractor. Yeah, it Peter, your business. Te- Peter teaches classes in New York, lives in Wisconsin. Peter was like the runner up. Yeah. Lives in Wisconsin, comes to New York, and sells out every one of his fitness classes. Yeah. No yeah. one cares if he's a good fitness yeah, instructor. Yeah, Andy, Andy like. Dorfman is like quit being a lawyer, and she's just like a model now. Yeah. Or and like then, an author. Well, then she went back on the show last season, yeah. which was funny to see her go back but, uh, and have them. It's like, yeah, came back to the to the follower well to pick up some people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, oh, man. oh, my God. Talk I love The Bachelor so much. It was very yeah. instrumental in Jamie and I sort of starting our yeah. relationship. Well, that, I think that's The a, JP it, season. I think it's watching with a girl. Is That's what kind of got me into it. I would watch with friends, and I like watching, like, the Bravo shows and all those reality shows. Yeah. And I would watch with girls a lot whenever, and I would have an opinion. And whenever I had an opinion, opinion on these things you could see them light up like they're just a, because it was just a different well, type of voice we gotta yeah. get you and michelle collins together sure. i'm gonna make I that my personal that. goal do you have anything uh you want to mention real quick before we go anything you plugs, plug? plugs, plugs plugs at jared freed on instagram I, I i love instagram at jared freed and then j train podcast and the you at up j train 57 right 56 56 at j train 56 on twitter the j train podcast and the U.S. podcast. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, this was man. the really I'm sorry fun. to wake you up before. No, yeah, this is yeah. great. I, I'm very happy to be here. Don't get sweaty. <laughs> yeah, this is my plan. Stay, stay busy, busy everyone. Right. Voicemail, because I'm busy. Whenever I get with her, say I'm busy. And I'm going to hit you later, because I'm busy. Busy with her.